time blocking or time boxing is scientifically proven to increase productivity and lessen procrastination. I have had fantastic results with it in my own life, and if implemented correctly, it can have fantastic results in your own. The essence of time blocking is assigning a time block to a particular task. You organize your entire day into time blocks, eliminating the question of what task you are to be working on at a certain time because you already planned it out beforehand. For those with overly busy schedules, time blocking can almost be a necessity. For example, Elon Musk and Bill Gates use this system. If they didn't, they'd probably fall apart as there are so many potential tasks they could be working on at any given moment. A regular task list is just like it sounds, a list of tasks without any particular structure. It may be the list of tasks you want to get done in a day, but it doesn't include times to work on those tasks. When I used this system, I found that I rarely completed all tasks on my list. I would continually postpone tasks, and some tasks I would postpone so many times that I never ended up even completing them. Regular task lists allow for procrastination. The benefit of time blocking is that it adds a commitment factor, encouraging you to work on the tasks during the time block you already designated. It is great for those who have a potential for getting overwhelmed, because you know exactly what you are doing when. There are many ways to incorporate time blocking into your daily life, from a day planner to a calendar, but in this video, I am going to focus on a particular digital method that I use to incorporate the time blocking system into my own life. If you aren't a person always on your computer or phone, well, that is probably beneficial to use a paper, day planner, or calendar for your time blocking system. However, for some of us, like me, who just like everything to be digital and have a very organized system for things using technology, well, the system I'm about to show might be right for you. Using a calendar app to block your day, such as Google Calendar or the native iPhone calendar app, is wonderful and works for many people who use time blocking as their task management system, and it's probably the simplest digital method there is out there for doing this. However, when I was looking into time blocking, I didn't want to get rid of the countless intuitive features that my task management system has to offer. So I decided to integrate my task management system into my calendar so I get the best of both worlds. The applications that I use are Todoist, my task management app, and Google Calendar, obviously my calendar app. I have found that out of all task management apps, Todoist is the one that has the best two-way sync with Google Calendar, making time blocking seamless. While this is not necessary, I do highly suggest time blocking the night before. Many studies show that planning out your day the night before can not only increase productivity, but help increase your motivation and provide mental clarity. So I'm going to start by adding a few tasks into Todoist, which we will organize in a bit. While my task management system largely revolves around my school day, this same method can be applied to practically any lifestyle. Now, since I have a bunch of tasks without dates, I will add days to each of the tasks to create a basic organizational structure. Usually, I will add the day right away when I create a task, but for the purposes of this presentation, I wanted to show how it would be if you started from scratch. Alright, so I am planning for the next day. All my tasks will already be listed under the tomorrow section in the next 7 days tab. The today and next 7 days tabs are where I spend most of my time, except for when I'm actually creating the tasks. To add the times, I can type this time either directly into the task field, because Todoist uses a smart text feature that automatically recognizes what I type into the field, or I could also just type the name into the due date section to the right of the task. Even though it says due date, in my planning system I use this field to represent the day and time I'm actually working on the task. Now, something that is extremely important but often overlooked in task management is breaking up large tasks into smaller manageable tasks. Here, I break up the large task called demand project into smaller tasks by indenting and adding tasks below. You can also create these smaller tasks called subtasks by clicking the info button of the task, basically the eye with a circle around it. So as you can see, then I went ahead and put in the dates I will complete these subtasks. And the idea is that I broke down this large demand project into tasks small enough that I can complete each one in one sitting. 
Remember, each subtask will represent its own time block. This time management system also works with repeating tasks, as long as the time that you put for the repeating task doesn't overlap with the times of other tasks. You can also add tasks directly within the next 7 days tab. For example, if you realize there's a task you want to be working on right now, I added a task called Chapter 1. Now notice how the time 6pm is in red. Whenever the time is in red, I know that this is the task that I should be working on right now. This is very helpful when just going through my day-to-day -day tasks and staying on schedule. Another helpful feature is the no due date filter on Todoist. I find myself using this a lot as I want to make sure that all my tasks have dates that I plan to complete them on. It ensures that I don't end up just forgetting about any tasks that I didn't schedule when I first created them. Remember, even though it says no due date, in the time blocking system this can really be thought of as something like no schedule, it just means we haven't scheduled the task yet. Another thing I like to do is actually add a time block called Plan Day that I create as a task that repeats each night before I go to bed. Even though I try to stick to this, there are many times that I find myself actually planning out my tasks throughout the day, such as scheduling my homework when I get home from school. This is absolutely okay, I just like to make sure that I spend some time at the end of each day planning, even if it's only a minute or two. The great thing about this system is that it is very flexible. Let's say I was just assigned a new homework assignment called 6.1 problems and I want to do some of it tomorrow. After adding 6.1 problems, I assigned a subtask of the 6.1 problems to tomorrow. Then as you can see, the subtask is listed under tomorrow, but it doesn't yet have a time so I can just go right in and add one. I'm constantly updating and manipulating my schedule, and while it may sound a bit complex at first, it does become a very intuitive process after a bit. So now here's where the fun stuff comes in, actually integrating your calendar with Todoist. I'm not going to discuss the whole integration process here, but it's pretty simple, so here's a quick time lapse. Now, I slowed it down right here because I wanted to go over a few important settings you should consider when connecting your calendar to Todoist. Event duration is a very important setting and it basically refers to the default length of a task that you add in Todoist that syncs to Google Calendar. Another important setting is the tasks without a due time, which you can either sync as all day events or just not sync at all. I just don't sync them because I find I have a lot of tasks without a due time and I don't like them all cluttering my calendar. And remember, you can always change these settings later. Now, if you don't already have your basic events set up in Google Calendar, this would be a good place to start. Remember, time blocking includes every aspect of your life, not just your tasks. For example, I just added a cross country meet that I have in the morning. I also suggest creating separate calendars for some basic color coordination. Just don't create too many calendars because it can get pretty confusing. As you can see, I created five different calendars, school, event slash appointments, personal, sports, and work. And you can also see the separate calendar called Todoist, which contains all the tasks we added in Todoist. Now, while this part is optional, the calendar makes a bit more visual sense if I actually drag the tasks to fit the time blocks. So the tasks were automatically imported as 45 minute tasks because that's the setting that I chose, but I went ahead and dragged all the tasks to fit how long I actually think they will take. And one thing to keep in mind when estimating how long tasks are going to take is the one and one half rule or the planning fallacy. It basically states that you should allow for 50% more time to complete a task than you expect. Basically, don't overload yourself. Give yourself enough time to complete tasks, taking potential distractions into account, as this will make the time blocking system much more manageable. Now the beautiful part about this is that it is a two-way sync, so any changes I make in Google Calendar will automatically update in Todoist. I can change the dates of tasks, or even add new tasks, as long as I make sure that the event that I add is in the calendar called Todoist, not any of the other ones. 
everything will update almost instantly in Todoist, as you can see on the right. Another important setting you can alter is whether or not you want tasks that you complete to stay in the calendar or be removed. As you can see here, I changed the setting to remove completed tasks from Google Calendar, so when I complete a task, it is no longer visible. Now, just to finish up, I'll show you a final example of me planning out my day for Monday, October 28th.